So I wanted to talk about something that has kind of been my struggle with this uh, board, but now I think I figured out how I'll use it. This doesn't mean that it's the end all and only way to use it, uh, but I wanted to just kind of talk about it. So first thing I'm gonna do is stop this from running. One of the things that's cool about this is to be able to sample in, and obviously, if you look over here, you can see shift, sample, sample, right? So this is where you're at. And then you can bring in samples from wherever you're gonna bring them in, record them through the back, through the line in, or you can use the uh, USB port back there. Um, however, let me see if I can straighten this out. One of the challenges that I've been facing was I want to be able to record sometimes from instruments off of my desktop, which is right there, right? And the only way to do that typically would be use the keyboard in a MIDI fashion. Oops, let me show you guys this. I'm trying to get it lined up. To use it in a MIDI fashion, right, where basically I'm using the MPC keys 37 as the MIDI. Now, previously I thought, well, the only way I was going to be able to do that would be to press the button here with this keyboard control, hit shift, and then the MIDI. Well, if you do that, it takes you out of the record mode. Sure, it works as a MIDI at that point, but you, then you can't use the sampler. Right, you have to exit out of there, and it will and it won't allow you to record that way. So my workaround was, when I started thinking about it, was, okay, I have this Yamaha dongle that's plugged into the back back here. Okay. And so the way I was going to do it was to take that and see if it would let me control the MIDI while I play. And so the answer is it does. Now, what you have to remember to do this in my previous video, I showed you, you have to use MIDI Mitter, which is uh, this program right here. And I told you it does work on different ones. And if you see here, you can plug it in, connect your Bluetooth, whatever device, and then your output can be that too. So you can send it right back in to the board if you need the MIDI to go into the board. But it also allows you to trigger in Ableton Live, which is what I really wanted to be able to do. So now I can play. Oops, wrong way, this way. From the keyboard. And you can see the input here is coming in now so I can actually record without having to use it. So there is a benefit of having a dongle. I'm not saying it's the only way to record. If you're just gonna record into the DAW, it's not a big deal. You don't really need that. But if you wanna be able to record in and then use your sampler and actually sample um, sample it back into here, Let me set this at a minute, then it's kind of nice to be able to do that. The other option, I guess, if you wanted to really go through all that trouble, and I don't see the point at that point, is to just record in the DAW and be done with it. But let's say you actually want to sample and then chop that sample. If you didn't want to do that chopping in the DAW and you don't want to go through, or you really want to work in the MPC, you still could use your sounds and be able to record in. So that's kind of a nice feature to be able to have. And you want to get the most use of your, your instruments, right? Or whatever you have instrument wise, especially if, you don't have all the instruments that exist within the MPC. So I do have those instruments and I um, and I will say this, I do like them. Oops, here's my foot you just saw. I do like them, but I think if I'm blatantly honest about it, and I'll kill the sound. Some of them, the most useful for me in my, 
Let me go back to, to plugins. The most useful ones for me personally, let me do this, is pretty much the mini D, the stage piano, and the stage EP. Everything else is kind of a hit or miss if I might use a preset in it. Not really a big fan of the sounds. They, they don't sound bad. They just don't sound amazing. They sound kind of average, if I might say. When you compare it to like, you know, using the Arteria sounds or using the um, Spectrosonic sounds or even Spitfire sounds, the sounds in here are just not on that level. These are useful sounds though. Don't get it twisted. They are useful sounds and you can use them in various ways. Just not when I compare them to the other stuff that I have. So if you don't have anything and you're just working out of here, you still can get some pretty good sounds that'll that'll get you by and get you where you need to go. Uh, particularly, like I said, the, the EP stuff is really nice. Um, you can go in and find yourself a nice, uh, even ambient stuff, you can find some pretty cool stuff in there. Let me see if it'll play. Should be playing the sound, but it's not. But anyway, um, that's fine. Maybe I need to be on this page to hear it. Turn it up. There we go. Just wasn't loud enough. So yeah, there's sounds in there that are useful, but they're average sounding sounds they're not anything special that's going to make you feel so you're going to have to when you use this type of sound or this type of stuff like the ep you're going to have to go into the instrument and actually do some editing if you really wanted to make it sound good i don't think the presets in my opinion are just that amazing and so anyway that's just my thought on it but i wanted to show you this so yeah using the dongle is probably the best way if you want to be able to use it as a MIDI controller and at the same time be able to um, use your instruments off of your computer. So you kind of need both. So I wanted to show you that. That's it for this video. I hope all is well. Until the next one, I'm out.